floor is open. The floor is open when everybody gets logged in. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. That's a good topic. I liked it. This this is man. This stuff that we need to know. We need to know. I like that how you mentioned that too about that. Yeah, the body is absent of wisdom. It is very much so. Go ahead. Anybody want to speak on that topic? Go ahead. Well, if they join in, the rest will just join in. Mm -hmm. I would I would like to say um my I, I don't want to be like off topic like that, but I think I'm still hitting on the same thing. Yes, sir. More on a personal note that uh I grew up in non-denomination with my mother, like I said, uh three to four days a week. I was in a choir, uh everything growing up, and I met a woman that I fell in love with that I knew that she grew up Jehovah Witness. And She's not so close mind to anything that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I, I've been so encouraged. This is the first time in my life, besides when I was in college with her, where she went to she went to church with me. Mm -hmm. College. Uh to the point where she grew up where her grandparents passed away and certain aunties didn't even go inside the church because because of their beliefs so strong. So I know if God gave me something with her when she was, when we were in our twenties and she went into that church with me and fellowship when I was going to church, like every Sunday when I was in college and I fell away from it and we haven't been back to church since then. She went to my mother's funeral and was inside of a church. Uh, I put a Christmas tree up every year and I don't believe in pagan holidays or anything like that. Thanksgiving, I always tell my kids, there's no Easter bunnies. There's no rabbit that lays an egg. All of that's been taught to me from my father. Uh, but at the point in my life right now, hitting on what the young lady was saying is, I believe you can't, you can't say something or talk about something you're not doing it to lead, as far as a man. And I'm at a point in my life where I can't, I've, I've extended, I'm as far as I'm going to go as a man. The next half of my life is going to come from what God's going to do for me and my family. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I, I do believe that God has enough power through me where my wife will attend every single meeting with me. She will go to any church with me as long as I'm doing what I'm supposed to do through the Lord. Mm -hmm. she'll look at me as that man and that's what I want that's the level I'll, I'll be 40 years old on the 31st of this month and it's I'm, I'm tired like I'm exhausted with mm -hmm. the money doesn't mean anything anymore the house uh, uh, achieving all of these different goals in life our kids are doing great in sports and school but I'm not the man right now. If I die tomorrow, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't lead the legacy that I want. And I want it to be where my wife could look at me in a different light. Mm. And the only way I could do that is through what we're doing right now with the encouragement you guys are giving me. I believe that, yes, she will hold my hand, sit right beside me in church and fellowship everything because she wants it too because she grew up with it mm -hmm. she married me also knowing that this was the part that she married just like i accepted what i married into her mm. yeah, man that's powerful brother man that's that's it's yeah. very, that is very powerful man. as far as judgment and everything I totally got what that young lady, that young woman was saying as far as people bickering and back and forth. Mm -hmm. We're doing that with each other all the time on petty things mm -hmm. because we're not accepting God to be our leader through every situation that we're going through. We're trying to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Man. Yeah. I, and yeah, that was, um, that, that's beautiful because too, the Apostle Paul speaks in Corinthians you know, about um, 
Oh, that's right. I found it at First Corinthians three at two. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither are you now able, for ye are carnal. For as there is among you envying, strife, and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? And that's and he's talking to the church here. You know, and just like you were saying, Roy, and just like my wife was um saying, you know, people are bickering and back and forth and, and, and doting about words and arguing about, you know, just senseless, worldly, carnal things. But they say and claim they're, that they're coming to represent for the spiritual. And I'll say on my part, as a man, I felt like going out, conquering the apprenticeship program in 2006, five year, I made a decision to, for us to make the move to come to Seattle. She was against it. She saw the leadership that I had in me. She followed me. And like I said, I've extended all that now as a man, right? And I've always prayed. I've always, I've all my favorite prayer, my number one prayer is, and I tell some of my, my boys from college, this is my prayer. God, you did not create a lazy man. If you open that door for me, I promise you, I'll run through it and I'll never walk back. And I've never had to worry about work. Mm -hmm. But that's the, that's the extent that I've done as far as a man. But I'm not following everything that I'm supposed to be doing with God right. to grow even more. I don't even know what life would be like on the other side. And that's what I want now. Right. That's what I want now. That's definitely hard for I want my to wife to look at me in another whole way, not just a handsome young man. And we got three kids together. She loves me, provider, mm -hmm. protector. I, I want the next level. I want her to spiritually, mm -hmm. like her to feel like just another level. Like I've been doing this. Mm -hmm. That's the new. That's the new normal for us, basically. Amen. I want the the next level. And I know that I'm not going to get there with just me as a man. And I've accepted that. And I'm not like mad about it or like, like I said, it's not like we're we're in the, the projects and, you know, we're doing bad. So I'm praying about just trying to do better. We are in a great position in life right now. Right. But that's not the end all for me. Mm hmm. I want my prayers to mean way more. I want my I want my son to see me in church. Man. He's 16 years old, about to turn 17. I want him to have that before he leaves my house and go to college. So he could provide that for his family and have a jump start on life more than I had growing up. Yeah. All right, all right. Amen. Anybody want anybody else want to speak on that? That was that was beautiful, right? I love that because it was just genuine. It was I genuine. Want to say something about that. I wanted to say um one thing I can testify to, and one thing I can as a woman and as a wife, one thing I can say is the inner transition that's spiritual. Oh, nothing is comparison to that. Mm -hmm. Um Anything on the outside, as far as a, a, a wife to her husband, um, as a woman, nothing materialistically or mm -hmm. nothing on the outside, not even an appearance, can compare mm -hmm. to that spiritual transformation and connection and that spirit that God puts in that man. There's nothing greater today. It's not even about the material things. I could live in a, we could be living in a, 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 a one bedroom studio. I'll be happy as a lark because mm. nothing compares to who my husband has become and who he is on the inside. That spiritual thing, that spiritual part, nothing compares to that. So I just wanted to add that as a wife and as a, a woman. And I wanted to speak on that too. I, I, like, I like that and I thank you guys for that because that was powerful and beautiful. But know that Christ has that for us. That's the power that he is talking about transforming us and, and starting on the inside, and it, it works on the outside. And all of us is going to have access to this, but it's just about positioning ourselves. Just like the apostle says, there are many that be saved, 
and, 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 and Christ will let them know it, about positioning yourself. You know, many are going to say in that day, once the master has risen, you know, and knock, and the Lord's going to tell them that their positioning is wrong. Strive to enter at the straight gate. That is Christ Jesus. He's the straight gate. He wants to straighten us out before we walk through the gate, before we go through the sheepfold. Come back to the sheepfold. He wants to straighten us out. So right here at 1 Corinthians at 6 and 7. Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you, the apostle says, because ye go law one with another. Why do you not rather take wrong? See, when you're in the body of Christ, I know I did wrong. I'm supposed to take that wrong. I ain't got to challenge my brother in, a, in an unjust court system. If I'm wrong, I'm supposed to be the first one to say I'm wrong. Why do you not rather suffer yourself to be defrauded? If you want to get over on me and you call yourself a brother, fine, get over on me. Remember, it's the Lord who's going to repay me. The Lord see what you're doing to me. Yeah, I want to thank everybody for the testimony tonight. You know, and I was just finna to say about that, what you just said. Dear, but why do you not rather take wrong? You know, right? You know, just change. You know, just just be, just forget about it and walk on, and let Jesus change you. You know, Amen. Amen. And I would also like to add, uh, since the fellowship, me kind of like. Yeah, I, I haven't been on like all year, but I made a conscious choice in my mind that this is something that I need. And I think I, I said this like last week or maybe the week before that I'm going to be on. I can promise you this. And it's just a full testimony. Me and my wife haven't been bad, like just, you know, problems. But I can say this, since I've been fellowshipping, and I would say thank you to everybody that's been praying for Roy, because I know it's something with God, because me and my wife's just around each other late, like in the last two weeks. She's up under my shoulder and we're watching a, a, a sitcom or something together. We talk different. During our work day, we're take our text messages, our communication, everything has been different, like totally different. And I know it can't be nothing but God because, like I said before, nobody had anything to sit around here and like bicker about or like argue about. But we weren't just loving on each other like this. Mm -hmm. And that's what's been happening in my house right now. Praise like, God. Literally. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. That's wonderful. I want to say thank you because I know it's it's not just me. I know it, it's a whole different feeling what's going on right now. Praise God. That's beautiful. I like that. Amen. 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 God is doing something in your life. He's moving. He's calling you to a to a higher place. He's calling you out he's calling you and when you're blessed your family's going to be blessed so you most definitely feel the holy spirit working and moving in your life and praise god that's good you're answering his call god is good amen so just for us to finish up know that when we were coming to the fold of being you know the lord restoring righteousness in our heart remember all those days and years we've been on earth doing wrong you know in a short matter of time when the lord put that power in us it can you know, it can speed the process up of, of uh, you know, allowing our heart to get right. But it's a continual work and it's going to continue to work. So know that when we, you know, suffer wrong at the hands of another person that said they're a believer and they know that they're wrong and we suffer that because we don't want to, you know, it to be blown up out of proportion or, or you know, we want to do what's right. The Lord is going to repay you and reward you. But bigger than so, people that are doing that getting over and think that they're getting over in the spirit. No, right here at 1 Corinthians at 6 and 9. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. 
neither fornicators, neither adulteries, adulterers, idolaters, nor effeminate, nor abusers or of themselves of mankind, nor abusers of themselves of mankind. So no, you're not getting over on anybody. You, you know, taking a matter before unjust people and think that you're getting over on them and think that you're about to get some money out of them and keep swelling them. No, God is watching you and you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God, <laughs> just like the word says. So you can be slick all you want to. I'll slick yourself on down there in Hades with Abaddon. <laughs> you, you slick yourself on down there. But just like we always say, anybody got any last words they want to say? Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 9, if you have not given your life to the Lord, we just ask you that you confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that God raised Jesus on the third day, thou shall be saved. Then we ask you to go and get baptized after that. Because Jesus said in John 3, 5, and 6, that can nobody enter into the kingdom of God unless they've been born by water and by spirit. So that's very well important. Do like John 8 says, continue in the word. Like Jesus told the Jews that, you know, if they continue in their word, the truth will set them free. Then you are his disciples, he said, and the truth will set you free. So be set free. It's an awesome, wonderful thing. It's an awesome, wonderful thing. Anybody got anything they want to say? Let us, let me know, too, if you guys are coming to the Home Fellowship so we can get I, things prepared. And, um, go ahead, Roy. I would like to ask you this, Derek. Uh, I was baptized at 13 years old. Uh, some of the worst years of my life, me being a knucklehead and in and out of juvenile, everything. And ministry was going on at my church where pastors came in. Uh, I don't even know what you call it. Like uh, pastors from out of town coming in, praying and then calling people to the pulpit and everything, and I went and I got baptized. And I've, I've always wondered, uh, me giving my life to the Lord then and getting baptized, like, now that I'm conscious, more conscious as a grown man, mm -hmm. uh, do you have to do it again to like, you know, uh, to be cleansed and like God see you in a different way now. You want to answer? Anybody think, want to answer, brother? Boy? Yeah, I was gonna say um, when you you know when when children like you know children get baptized at a young age and you know sometimes it's encouraged by either like you said someone at people at the church or it could be in, encouraged by parents or what have you but the thing about it is if you don't have an understanding of what it even means mm -hmm. or why you did it and you just really don't really know um i would say you probably want to get baptized again because you don't even understand why you we have to know why we're yeah. getting baptized we have to know the meaning of what it is otherwise it's what are we doing you that's the thing you have to know it in your heart you have to know you you have to know what you're doing you have to understand that jesus is your savior you have to understand that the jesus died for us that he came back you have to understand you know you have to understand what you're doing if you don't have that understanding then yeah you probably want to do it again so i'm thinking too I do, i'm thinking now you know you coming into a more of an understanding and you know the meaning of christ and 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 just understanding all of, you know, just more of the word, you know, you, if the Lord is pressing on you to get baptized, mm -hmm. you know, you do that, you do that now and allow, you know, yeah. God to take the reins and he'll um, work things out. Go ahead, Lemuel. Yeah, yeah, Ron, I just got baptized uh, back in October. And then just what Michelle, just what Michelle was saying, it was at the time, it, you know, when you're six years old, in church, that's the first thing you, everybody say, go get baptized, you know. But now it's a different, it's different now, you know. You understand it now, why you got baptized, you Amen. know. Uh, Amen. Right? Uh, when you 
get baptized and you come up and that's the symbol that Christ is raised from the dead, you know, so mm-hmm. it's a whole different, then you understand the word, understand more of the word, you know, you know, go ye therefore into the world and make disciples, you know, that's, that's the part that got me, you know, mm-hmm. so, yeah. and find others you to get baptized too, so, mm-hmm. yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're um we're we're thankful today. Let me pray us out. You you get your um questions answered, Brother Roy. I did. Thank you. Uh, I believe that what I was thinking just got answered. Put it that way. Um, like I said, I was yearning for something at thirteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, with my father being away prison and me acting out, uh, getting a lot of trouble, but my mom was strong in the church. And I, I do feel like it was a lot of, uh, my mom never pressured me, but she she prayed a lot on me. My mom prayed hard on me and it hit my heart a lot when I was at that age. And it probably was the only thing, not probably, it was the only thing that saved me, that got me to go off to get a scholarship Mm-hmm. for football and go off to college. And then, like I said, I never forgot it. I went to church when I was in college and then I stopped everything and kind of let my life, because I was so blessed after that, everything just kind of worked out, right? Mm-hmm. But like I said, with the house, my kids are great, school, my wife, great with her career, great with my career. I'm yearning for something different. And if it is getting baptized in that water again to like take me to that next level, that's I'm yearning for it. Mm -hmm. I'm yearning for it. Like literally these talks that we're having, the scriptures being read to me that I've already been in church and heard over a thousand times. The book read to me, me reading the book. It hits different as a grown man and doing it without anybody carrying me to church, driving me there and me being a college and feeling like I'm just all alone. All I know is God just do that. Now I know it, but I want to like, I want to do it. Mm. And I, and I wanted to, I wanted to feel different. I want to feel different. Right. right. I want to feel that strength that, I'm not worried about a man at a job site or a foreman or a superintendent. I'm a foreman. I'm not, I don't want to worry about a superintendent that I don't get along with because my own emotions, I want God to have control over everything that happens in front of me. Okay, I want him to lead my family, lead me to lead my family. I want to be a better father. Yeah. People on the outside can say, man, you're doing everything, man. You're great. But I'm missing something for me. I'm 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 not who I want to be. Right, right. You can feel that's an internal thing. You right. can feel that inside. Right. Right. Mm. Hey, man. Let us let us pray. God, thank you, um, brother Roy, for blessing us. Just tonight you was awesome, brother. Just speaking from your heart, just you know, allowing us to understand that. You know, you can have all the outward things, but if you don't have that inward, I ain't going to call it a thing. If you don't have that inward power from Christ, it can leave that void and everybody else can see the things about you that they like about you, but you can feel that void that's in you that can't nobody else feel unless they're feeling it for themselves. So, We'll just pray. We'll pray to the Lord and have him fix it. Dear Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus, we're thankful that you gave us a wonderful, masterful teaching that we can understand your your ways. We can understand your laws. We can understand your teachings to govern ourselves by. Lord, continue to pump wisdom to us so we can understand how to walk in the spirit, to walk in your word, to walk in your letter, Lord, is to govern our life and to keep us according, Lord, until the day that you meet us in the cloud. So we're thankful for another wonderful opportunity to come together and just commune and fellowship. And we can just speak our heart, speak about the things that we desire outside of this vain life. And that is you. Only you can give that. 
So we come to you today, Lord, just reaching for you, continuing to reach for you until the day you call us up and meet us in the cloud. We love you. We honor you as we go from here. Prepare us another lesson, Lord, that we can come together and we all can just glean in your word, Lord, and just fill each other up in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You guys have a good wonderful blessing hey. evening, rest of the night and week. Let us know if you guys yeah. come to the home fellowship so we can prepare and get things ready. So okay, guys, dear. I'll, I'll give you a ring. Amen. Yeah. God. Amen. God bless yeah. you guys. God, God I got blessed in the night. Okay. God bless you, Brother Roy, too, as well. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Roy, you take Thank God you. God bless you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, Michelle. All right. All right, Lamar. All right. Be set free. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that God. I, I, you know, I, that's a sermon, Be Set Free. Right. I went to this church, and that was his sermon, Be Set Free. That's what <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Take care.